So I'm here in my garage and I've got my two EcoFlow Delta Pros, each one with two expanded batteries on it. This is the largest Delta Pro system you can get. I bought it with my own money out of my own pocket. This is not sponsored or anything like that. They did not send me this equipment for free. I'm not being paid to tell you any of this or anything like that. This is just my honest, true, personal opinion. And I like it. I like the system a lot and I am running my entire house off of just these two Delta Pros right here. And I'm just gonna do a test to see how long I can run my house nonstop. I'm not gonna change anything about our habits. We're not gonna go into emergency power mode. We're gonna still run the water and do our laundry and cook things and do everything like normal. And I just wanna see how well this does. This has only been running for about 15 minutes or so, but I've got a little over 20,000 watt hours of battery capacity here and so According to my math, we should be able to run for at least 24 hours off of this system right here. And I'm not gonna keep any solar panels connected to it either. So in a real situation, if the power was out, grid was down, whatever the situation, I would connect about 3,200 watts of solar panels connected to this to help keep things charged up. And on average, we're only using around 300 to 400 watts at any given moment. Of course, I haven't been running it for very long, so we'll see how that changes. Everything's topped off, everything is pretty much full. So we're gonna see how long it lasts and I'll give you little updates uh, as we go along. So this should be pretty fun, running the whole house, the well pump, everything. So stay tuned, you won't wanna miss this on the EcoFlow Delta Pro and how long it'll run my entire house. This is probably the biggest thing that I love is the fact that I have easy running water. Now this is well water, but we like to drink Berkey water so we filter even our well water for everything that we drink. And this will hold six gallons, so it lasts us a couple of days. Using the microwave, no problem at all. And what about running the furnace? Clicked on, let's see if it actually runs. Well, if we look here, it says it's blowing. It says it's blowing about six miles an hour. Currently blowing out 75 degree air right here out of the vent. In our house, we actually have two sets of washer and dryer, two towers here. So we got two washers down below, two dryers up above. And the one here on the left is powered by propane. So it's 120 volt and it's heated with propane. This one's 240 volt, obviously heated with electricity. And we got two wet loads here. I'm gonna go ahead and get them all dried up. Oh, we leave that open, please. Okay, well, I was running the uh, 240 volt here, and I just went to turn this on, and we just lost power, so I think we just exceeded the surge. So looking out here, the power is off on this switch. Okay, it says overload error 109. So let me turn everything off. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, error 109, still getting an error. Okay, so I went and flipped off the 240 volt breaker for that dryer and washer, then open the washer and dryer so they can't turn on right away. Let's see what happens. Oh, still getting an error 109. Well, this really sucks. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and completely disconnect from the transfer switch, try to reset these and try this again. Okay, so I've got this disconnected, got the transfer switch turned off, all the circuits are turned off in the electrical panel. So let's get this queued up. Okay, so that's there. Now supplying power. Okay, we're not running anything yet. So no error code. Everything is up and running again. We're all good. So the bottom line is I can't run two dryers at the same time. Apparently the surge from the 120 volt uh, with the 240 volt already running will overload the system. But that's why we do this test. This is why I always recommend, as soon as you guys get your equipment, plug it in and start testing it. That way you know what it can and cannot do. These systems are limited, even though they are quite amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and start this one up again. The normal load. This is the one that's using electricity. We get a good flicker, but no problem running it. So this shouldn't take too long to dry uh, because there's a lot of because there's not a lot of cotton stuff in here, so I'm gonna let this one run, and then I'll switch over to this one and dry all that. So this is the crazy part to me. I was only using about three or 400 watts running the entire house without the dryer, 
Now I'm running the dryer and it says 2,900 watts here and about 2,900 watts here. So we're basically getting 5,800 watts to run that dryer. Uh, I'm not running the furnace anymore or anything like that. Just whatever vampire loads there are, as well as the TV, Wi-Fi, stuff like that. That electric dryer is using a ton of power. If it's an emergency, you need a clothesline. Okay, this one is done and completely dry. So we're gonna go ahead and get this one started. Okay, it didn't flicker as bad that time. Let's see how much power it's drawing. So on this one, it says about 330, and this one's about four, we'll call it 500. So about 830 watts. So 5,000 watts less than the electric one. So uh, definitely won't be a problem running that one. We, we used about 8% just running the dryer uh, that's 240 volts, so quite a lot of power there. And that was a really light load, and so a heavier load would probably use a lot more. Pretty interesting. So I'm a little more than 20 hours into this, as this has been going non-stop, we can see that the top unit is at 22% and the bottom unit is at 61%. There's a huge difference between the percentages here, and the reason that is, is because each one of these is literally running each side of the electrical panel. So obviously this unit is running the side of the electrical panel that uses a lot more power than this one. You can see, for example, right now, this one's nearly using a thousand watts and this one down here is using about, well, now a hundred, it was at 250. I imagine that this one's the right side of the electrical panel and this one's the left side of the electrical panel simply because of what's on those sides of the panels and how often those things are getting used. Uh, on the right side of the electrical panel, it runs a sub panel that runs basically all of the downstairs. And since we have people down there as well, it makes sense that this is using more power because that's running more rooms and outlets and such. So in order to make this even, this is pretty simple. I'm gonna turn off the power here, okay? Now there's power off to the whole house. The AC power is off here and off here. And I'm going to unplug it right here and right here and just swap it. Okay, so now that one's in. And that one's in. So I'm gonna go turn off the main power real quick and then come back and reset everything. Okay, so I've turned off everything that is on the electrical panel, but the transfer switch is still on. Let's, looking good. I'm gonna go flip the breakers on now. Okay, and just like that, now I can see that we're pulling a heavy load down here, about a thousand watts. And up here is about 400 watts. That makes sense because everything's turning back on, the fridge and everything. And this makes a lot more sense why I couldn't run the two dryers yesterday because when I had the one dryer running that was using power from each unit, it was pulling about 28, 2900 watts from each one of these. And the load for each of these is 3600 watts that it can continuously run. So once I turned on the second dryer, that's only running on one leg of the electrical panel. So that exceeded the 3600 watts that either one of these could run on their own because both of these working together, we're running the 240 volt dryer and then adding the other dryer, only one of these was running the other dryer and that was too much power. So this is how this whole system works. It's really amazing. It's incredible. These are lithium iron phosphate batteries. It's really clear that this easily runs my house nonstop doing everything very normal, not doing emergency power saving or anything like that for at least 24 hours. So right now this is at 22% and it says we got another 14 hours before this will stop working. And down here it says five hours because there's something running on this leg of the electrical panel that's using a lot of power. Either way, we only need four more hours until we're at that 24 hour mark. And so this will clearly run my house for a minimum of 24 hours. And all of this was without using any solar panels. This might be my new favorite system. I'm not sure but it really might be. I am loving this setup. Uh, I love the 240 volt capability. It makes life so much easier. It is worth the extra expense in my opinion. And so uh, you'll definitely see me doing a lot more videos with this, uh, doing a lot more testing. I gotta take this up to the cabin. I gotta run the RV off of it. I'm gonna install a mini split in the RV and we're gonna be heating and cooling the RV with a system just like this. We'll be doing videos with the High Solus and more Titan stuff and all of the different solar generators. And you will not wanna miss out on those upcoming videos. So make sure you're subscribed. Again, I bought all of this, every penny of it with my own money. Uh, it set me back quite a bit. Uh, but hopefully you found this content really helpful and I'll be bringing more out. The biggest thing, you need to go to poweredportablesolar.com. Links are down below. Get prepared. This equipment is absolutely invaluable 
during an emergency. I had a power outage just because one of my lines got cut. Didn't have to worry about it. We're running our outlets, our lights, everything just like normal. It was incredible. So I highly recommend it. There's no noise, there's no fumes, there's no worrying if the gas has gone bad or if the carburetor has gone bad or anything like that. Literally, Turn on some buttons. Hopefully I have a little bit better understanding of how these balance as far as running the different legs on the electrical panel, how to connect it all. It's not cheap. There's no way around it. It's not cheap and these are extremely heavy, but I love them. I absolutely love them. This is pretty incredible. So thanks for tuning in guys. Be prepared. I'll see you guys in the next video.